Well, I'm just sitting here in the lounge at Toronto Pearson Airport. I'm getting ready to hop on this uh, tin can for about 15 hours. Got a few stops in China before I get to Korea and you know, bang out our first uh, major driver test for 2018. Yeah, this is going to be a, you know, a long form uh, video and hopefully everybody gets some benefit out of it. You know, I've got all the driver heads uh, that we're going to be testing down in my luggage is checked under the plane. So uh, hopefully that shows up. I've also got my GC quad and my TrackMan 4. So fingers crossed. <laughs> um, you know, and what we went through and did uh, was we had Carson go and he actually tested the center of gravity location on uh, on all of these heads he then went through and mapped out the face so we know what the bulge and roll is and the last thing he did was test the moi using our gear back at the lab so uh, i'm going to be testing uh well, we'll start off i guess what we got callaway sub-zero callaway rogue taylor made m3 taylor made m4 uh the boys at Bing ping just uh hooked us up thanks a lot for that uh eric and paul awesome thank you thanks to sasho for the intro <laughs> we've got a g400 g400 lst and G400 Max. We've also got 917D2, 917D3, and we're gonna be setting up shop at Kigos for a couple days. So we've got two major tests that we have planned. Uh, one is just gonna be seeing what drivers give the best ball speeds, and really are they giving any different ball speeds. We're gonna test them at 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120 miles an hour. And that's all gonna be center impact. Um, we're also then going to go and we're going to use the M3 and we're going to test nine different points on the face and we're going to, uh, you know, get all the data from that, but also uh, also get it when we move the weights around. So from that, hopefully we're going to understand, you know, we know how much the CG moves, but how much of an effect is that actually having? You know, in the end game, you know, the big time goal would be to try and develop a gear effect engine that would be a, you know, something that's really useful for golf coaches when we're trying to fit golf clubs and don't necessarily have um, you know, have all the tools that we want to get. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. I'm going to be putting some stuff up as well from the China Golf Show. And uh, yeah, I'm going to learn about how to, how to calibrate robots and get all the technology to talk to each other. I also got my thousand frame per second camera, so we're going to shoot some stuff with that and figure out what the best driver on the market is. All right, everyone. I uh, was able to grind through that uh, whatever it was, 12 or 15 hour flight. I have no idea. But um, I'm here in the Crown Plaza in Beijing. So let's, let's talk a little bit about center of gravity. Now I've, got, uh, I've got some of our documentation and stuff open, but I, I guess the first thing I want to make sure that we understand is like, what the heck is it? Um, you know, so usual stuff I'll do. I'll go to Wikipedia and I'll be like, what is center of gravity? And then I get, I get a whole bunch of words I don't understand. Um, but to me, center of gravity is the point in space around which all mass of this driver head is evenly distributed. So how do we even go about measuring that? Well, you know, I've got, uh, I've got all of our information for the Auditor CGM, Center of Gravity Measurement Device, and it's actually, in a, in a way, it's pretty simple, but then it can get fairly complex in a hurry. So Carson's done all the testing on all of these heads, and, and what happens is the first thing, you know, we take some of the basic measurements I can see up here uh, we're talking about the uh, Callaway Rogue right now. So I've got, you know, the lie angle on this driver was 60.6. We've got the uh, the loft at face center was 9.8, and the face was 0 0.4 degrees closed. Uh, all of that stuff comes actually from our angular measurement machine, but it's critical information if we actually want to be able to measure center of gravity. And that, that loft is a very important one. Now the head weight on this um, is only 186 grams, so you know pretty light. And we go through and we get into this interesting stuff. So we've got here it's called CGZ or Z for us Canadians, uh, CGY and CGX. So to me that's kind of the first little bit in understanding how we determine where is that point in space, where is that point inside this club head where all the mass is evenly distributed. So what the CGM machine does is it actually suspends the head on three different axes. All right, so it's going to measure the CG on the X, the Y, and the Z axis. And then that actually starts to give us some measurements. So, you know, these here are all, uh, are all based in millimeters. 
and we run them through some simple formulas once we've got the measurement and now all of a sudden we've got what I would consider some usable information. So the first thing is we take a look at what is the vertical CG location. So whereabouts in this point of space, how, how high up in this club head is it? So with the, you know, with the club head naturally at rest, what we know with this rogue is that that CG location was 30.67 millimeters up from the very bottom of this golf club. And when we take a look at how far is it inside from the heel. Now it's also important to understand that's from the center heel, center heel, not the back of the heel. And it's 32.42 millimeters in here towards the center of the club face. And the last one, and this is, I don't know, uh, I mean, obviously I'm not, uh, I'm not an engineer, but you know, this, this next one uh, is the, the CG depth from the leading edge. How far back is it? I think that's what we're going to see has the biggest effect on ball flight. And we're going to kind of talk our way through it. I'll explain to you why. Um, so this is, uh, for this particular head, is 44.4 millimeters back. Okay, so now we've got, we know that it's, whatever we'll say, it's roughly 31 millimeters up off the ground. It's 32 millimeters in from the heel. And it's 44 millimeters back. So that gives us the true CG location in space. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't tell us where that projects onto the face. So that's where we start to get into some more calculations in the trigonometry. Um, so after we work through that, you know, it, it takes into account the true loft on the face. So if you remember, we said that was uh, 9.8. So if you, if you can picture, you know, we work back and wherever it is here, there's this, you know, this head has a CG right in here in space and it projects upwards on an angle equal to the loft of the club and that's how we actually can get the true face projection. So when we go to locate where is that CG projection here actually on the club face, you know, we need to know uh, how far it is from the heel, but then we also need to know, you know, how far up we go. So in this particular case, the CG is uh, projected onto the face is 38.33 millimeters up the face. Now, right now that probably doesn't mean much, but let's bring in our sub-zero head. So when we take a look at how the sub-zero contrasts with the rogue, you know, the, the biggest difference that we see, especially when the weight is forward, that center of gravity on this head moves forward nearly 10 millimeters. It's only 36 millimeters back instead of 44 millimeters back. So when we, we take that into account and we run that through the same trig, you know, imagine this CG is only back here. It, it's not going to be able to project up as high on the face. You know, so effectively that has a, a lower CG projection on the face, which is, you know, why my understanding is that we see less spin. So uh, you can actually see, let's see if I can get this right in here. I think you can actually see the lines right there so you can see where those lines cross right and that's telling me the how far in from the heel the CG is and we take that and we go with this the vertical location of the CG and we move up 35 millimeters so when this weight is in the forward position like it is right now that that CG location on the face for the sub-zero weight forward is yeah about three millimeters lower you know which is about uh yeah i'd probably say almost the depth of one groove so i think it's gonna be really interesting when we get both of these things on the robot with the same shaft the same club head cp the same impact point and you know we're going to be measuring like i said with gears with gc quad and with trackman we're going to see like how much of a difference does that three millimeters make and does it make bigger differences across various speeds Anyway, I've got uh, I got a presentation that I got to get ready for here in Beijing. Then I'm flying out to Guangzhou tonight for another one tomorrow. So hopefully, that little uh, little bit of background information on CG, how it's measured, and how it actually projects forward to the face will give us a little better understanding when we finally get to Kigos and get to test these things out on the robot. Anyway, that's it for now. It's uh, time to hit the road.